Leading into the end of March, we were promised an Apple event where we would see a few new products, maybe a new iPhone, iPad Pro, MacBook Air, and potentially some new AirPods. Well, with everything going on, Apple never announced an event, but this morning we woke up with a couple of press releases for an iPad Pro and a new MacBook Air. I'm Jason Cipriani with Jason Perlo, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today is the new iPad Pro, and maybe we'll get into that MacBook Air depending on how much time we have left. So Jason, new iPad Pro, I know you're super excited about this. What do we know? Well, you know, it, f from just looking at the pictures of the thing, it looks really similar to the last generation. It looks, yeah. from the face of it, it looks exactly like the last generation, but if you flip it over, it looks like an, an iPhone, 11 Pro, right? It's got the same camera array. It does have some new things that it can do that the iPhone cannot do. But effectively, it is a spec revved iPad Pro. Um, what I thought was interesting about it is they did not go with an A13 style processor. They went with an A12 style processor, but is the A12Z. Now, there are some significant differences between an A12 style processor and an A13 style. Um, the A13, although it's a very, very fast processor and you can get quote unquote desktop level performance out of it, it is a six way, six way. So in other words, you have uh, three, you got, you got three, uh, you got, you got three uh, high speed cores and you got six, uh, three uh, slower speed cores and I believe eight GPU cores on, on it. Whereas the A12 series was four power cores and four efficiency cores and seven GPU cores. Now we don't know anything about the A12Z, how many GPU it has. It has we gotta a, assume it, it's also an eight way. Yeah. It, it does have eight. Yeah, the press release says it's an eight core GPU and the A12Z or Z, depending on where you live, yeah. bionic processor. Yeah, so they went up a, a, a GPU core and they probably are doing some interesting, cool things with power management. I mean, it's not like the A12 was a slacky chip to begin with anyway, no, right? Not at all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so I think they're going for more of a desktop computing power arrangement um, on, on the iPad Pro. So that's why they're still calling it a, a 12, but this is no slouch, the, the 12Z, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, so on the surface, like you said, it, it looks exactly like the current iPad Pro, the two or actually the 2018 iPad Pro. There's not a whole lot of visual differences. It's a more or less a spec bump. They did do quite a bit of work with the camera though. There's two yeah. cameras on the back, but they also added a LiDAR camera which is great in its sole purpose is for scanning the environment around you and creating 3D depth maps. This is the same type of technology some driverless car companies use for real-time navigation and you know seeing what's around the car and, and making adjustments there. But now it's condensed and it's put into the iPad, which obviously lends itself to AR, augmented reality use cases for business and education. I thought it was interesting though that they only put it in the rear. They didn't put one also in front. Um, yeah. Because then I could see, remember when Xbox One had that really cool thing on that sensor? Yeah. Um, I still have one and they, of course they discontinued it. Um, but that, that was one of the early applications of being able to do three dimensional, you know, uh, interactive right. stuff uh, with games and things like that. Um, I thought that would have had some interesting potential um, on the iPad if they had it on the other way around, but I guess they're really looking for more professional vertical industry applications um, for use with the LiDAR for things like architecture and, 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 and engineering type of things. Yeah, my, my gut tells me that this is a test bed for the next iPhone, right? I mean, they've already kind of yeah. decided what the next iPhone's going to have, but they can optimize based off of data they get from people using LiDAR on the iPad Pro. It's going to be a much smaller set of users, but it's still going to be there and allow them to customize it um, and go from there. So same 10 hour battery life with this new iPad Pro as well. 11 and 12.9 inch models, starting price at $799 and $999 respectively. Of course, there's a Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi plus LTE models. No 5G, which some may be upset about. I'm perfectly okay with that. That's just going to increase the price on it. And, you know, $999 for an iPad Pro is already quite a bit. If you go with the base model, which is now bumped up from 64 gigabytes to 128 gigabytes of storage uh, for both sizes, which I think is a, a welcomed addition. Yeah, and I went with the base model this time instead of bumping it up another you know level. Um, I thought I thought that made the most amount of sense. So you already bought one? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So I mean, the announcement was what three hours ago? Pretty. Yeah. As soon as you told me, I'm like, okay. <laughs> awesome. So. There was one other part of the iPad, or there's actually a couple more, but 
the most exciting part of the iPad Pro announcement for me personally is the new Magic Keyboard. So normally there's been a keyboard, yeah. smart keyboard cover, some sort of case that attaches to the smart connectors on the iPad Pro. And there is another one of those with this new iPad Pro, but this time it has the same scissor keys that the new butterfly mechanism scissor keys and the Magic Keyboard that we've seen on MacBook Pros and now the new MacBook Air, but it also has a trackpad. And mm. Apple announced iOS 13.4, which will be released on March 24th, has true trackpad and mouse support with a new type of cursor. Now this keyboard looks very different than what Apple's released before for the iPad, Jason. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that the the, the previous keyboard was a bit of a, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't buy the last keyboard for the last iPad. I haven't really? bought the new one either um, because I mostly do all my typing at my desk. But I know plenty of people that were mobile professionals. You know, they had to go through third party uh, solutions to get good keyboard cases for the iPad Pro. They didn't really like the, the previous one very much. Um, the fact that, you know, we, we didn't have good mouse support, integrated mouse support. You either had a, it, well, there was mouse support in iOS. It just that it, it, it didn't work seamlessly the way everybody wanted with an integrated keyboard device. Right. So this really makes the iPad more of a true laptop replacement, finally, for those people that want to be able to do that. Yeah, so what's interesting to me about this keyboard is it has a cantilever design. So the actual iPad Pro never touches the bottom of the case. It kind of... Yeah, it has a hinge that you can adjust right now. The smart keyboard cover has two spots. Your screen is either, you know, laid back a little bit or more vertical with yeah. this new design. You're able to move your keyboard or the screen around and adjust it just like you would a laptop, uh, which to me is a welcomed addition. I recently wrote a story um, after using the Surface Pro X for a couple of weeks on right. basically Apple needs to take that design for their keyboard cover and adopt it to the iPad Pro and essentially that's what this is. Right. But this Magic Keyboard also has a USB-C pass-through on the side where the hinge is that allows you to charge your iPad Pro at the same time as you're using it instead of having to use the port that's on the side of it, which makes it more like a laptop. You know, we're, that's definitely where we're heading with all of this. Um, and then the, the built-in keyboard has backlights welcomed edition as well. For me, I've used the smart keyboard covers for all iPads since it came out. To me, they're preferable. I don't like the Bluetooth delay that happens, you know, when waking up your device. And also, I don't want to have to worry about charging my keyboard. Using the smart connector on back of the iPad Pro, the smart keyboard uh, case, this is confusing, isn't it? Um, actually powers itself based on the iPad's battery. So I've always preferred those, but here, Here's the crazy part about all of this. They don't ship until May, so there's a slight delay there. We don't know why. Could have been supply chain issues, just could have been timing of everything that's going on. But if you wanna buy one, you better be ready. They're the same price as the base model iPad. $299 for the 11 inch Magic Keyboard, $349 for the 12.9 inch Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. That is insane. It is insane. Um, you're going to have to let me know how you like that thing in May or June if they ever show up. I did not order one because I don't normally, I, I normally use my iPad as a, as a recreational secondary computing device. It's not a primary computing device for me. Um, and I was expecting to do more travel this year and that didn't happen. I thought maybe I'd end up running around with one, but it is what it is. Um, I think that the OE, the, 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 the third party partners, you know, the Mophies of the world and, and the Logitechs and whatnot will probably be interested coming up with some interesting devices uh, right. to compete with this now, not if they have access to the connector and other things. So I, I don't think that the Apple OEM solution is necessarily going to be the most optimal one for everybody. And definitely it won't, it, it's not the cheapest. So if, no. anyone who, who comes out with a more affordable version of this thing is, is likely to make a lot of sales now that the software supports things properly. Well, Bridge, who makes great keyboards, accessories, they've, they announced the iPad Pro case. I don't remember the exact name of it right now. Um, a couple of months ago, and they're supposed to start shipping at the end of the month, and they have a built-in trackpad. So their timing could not have been better as long as they're able to stick to that end of March shipping time frame. And they were much cheaper than $349 price point. I have the current 2000, or the 2018 iPad Pro. I don't 
think I'm going to order the new iPad Pro, but instead I'm going to order the new keyboard, um, which, you know, it is expensive, but I, I want to try it out. iOS 13 launches in a week and the new mouse support, just based off of the quick animated image that Apple has posted, is intriguing to me. It's not like it is currently an iPad OS uh, where it's an assistive touch feature and you have a dot that has a circle around it to let you know where it's at and it acts more like a traditional mouse pointer. Instead, the new iOS 13.4 method for trackpad or mouse support, the pointer or cursor actually changes and adapts based on what you're hovering over. So if you go over a button, instead of there being a little finger that, you know, or a pointer that clicks on that button, the button is highlighted. If you go over text, it turns into a cursor. If you go over an app, the app kind of expands and highlights itself. Very adaptive and not at all what I expected Apple to do with full mouse support, but it's intriguing to me and I, I can't wait to try it out. Yeah, and I'm really interested in seeing, you know, how um, iPad OS uh, 14 um, ends up working out, you know, because, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing this, this the, the original deviation to iPad OS 13 it had, they added a few little extra things. You know, there was it wasn't a tremendously different operating system, but we are starting to see indications that they're, they're going in a, in another direction. So yeah, absolutely, just how much different iPad OS fourteen is from iOS would be, would be some interesting. And I think that there is going to be some cross pollination, especially when they're talking about multitasking changes, a few other things that we've seen leaked um, out there. One thing I do want to say about this iPad Pro is that this has taken a very long time to come out. And the reason why I just bought one sign on scene was I sold mine. I think it was back in May yeah, uh, because it, a while ago. it was a while because it, we had gotten the announcement about an upcoming event. Um, and we thought it was going to be the iPad refresh event and ended up, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't announce it. So I had sold it back to Amazon thinking that this was going to happen. And I'm like, Oh great. Maybe it'll be only three months. It's been a lot longer. Yeah than three months. Yeah, you've been waiting, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this new mouse support will also work with regular Bluetooth accessories. It's, it's gonna be across the board. Uh, they also announced a new MacBook Air today that includes the new Magic Keyboard keys, you know, the ones that aren't supposed to have the issues that MacBooks have been plagued with for the last yeah. few years. Uh, they used it first in the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Um, now it's made its way to the MacBook Air. And it's back down to the 999 price point, and it includes Intel's 10th gen um, core processors. I saw. I think the 999 model starts with an i3, and of course you can uh, customize it from there. 256 gigabytes base storage now, which is not a whole lot for a laptop, but it's a lot better than 120, whatever it was before that. Um, do you have any feelings about the MacBook Air? Well, it, it, it's interesting. You know, I've seen a lot of, of professionals that I work with in, in enterprises that are Mac oriented, really centering around MacBook Pro. So um, I don't really see the air being having tremendous penetration in business. Um, I'd like to see, I, I think it's, it has potential in, in educational markets, people that are in college, people that are at a want to be at a lower price point, somebody that wants something not quite as heavy. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's a it's a spec rev MacBook Air. Um, yeah, it I is what the, it is. You yeah, know? I think the real story there is the new keyboard, right? Like yeah. these people things wanted been, that thing dead to go, gone, yeah. finished, burned you know. in a fire. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, pretty excited about today's announcements. I think the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard is, you know, I, you're looking at if you get an LTE model, base model, you're looking at. Fifteen hundred dollars for the whole setup. That's it's very expensive. I mean, you're you're really in lap in heavy duty laptop territory. Um, so it's it's, and honestly, I'll, I mean, a MacBook Air is a thousand dollars, and it's a full blown laptop with full blown Apple compatibility. So if you weigh these two products against each other, the uh, the iPad Pro. I mean, you need to have very. I think you need to have very specific requirements and demands to use an iPad over uh, a, a, a lower level MacBook. Yeah, at some opinion. point, it becomes a preference for a touchscreen device with Apple Pencil yeah. support compared to a traditional computing device. For me personally, I'm still going to continue to work on the iPad uh, quite a bit. I write a lot on it. It is yep. my go-to laptop. If I'm not at my desk, I am on my iPad Pro. 
with the smart keyboard connector uh, and using that nonstop. I don't see myself opting to buy a MacBook Air, even though it would save me money at this point. Yeah. Um, just because I prefer the dynamic of being forced into one app at one time. There is multitasking and whatnot, but uh, it's easier just to focus in a word processor or looking, you know, doing research or whatever for me personally. Uh, but yeah, we're getting into that really weird territory where an iPad is more expensive than a MacBook and the software still needs some improvements. So it'll be interesting, like you said a little bit ago, to see what happens well, with iOS 14. Um, we didn't really th think this new trackpad and, and yeah. mouse support was going to come with 13.4. Leaks and rumors uh, over the last couple of weeks had pointed towards iOS 14. So uh, it, it's nice to see it now, but I think iOS 14 in June. Hopefully that's when it's still announced. Um, it's going to really tell the tale of what this iPad Pro is is meant to do with the Magic Keyboard. Yeah, I mean let's let's face it, right? The 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 application ecosystem for iOS and iPad is way way bigger than Mac is right now, which is yeah, very so odd. Many amazing apps. All the apps are on an iPad. So if, if you look at the MacBook Air and the iPad Pro strictly from a price point perspective, it's not really a good metric. I mean, it, I'm honestly, it it's comes down to the apps you use. Do the apps yeah. and the workload you use justify the equipment that you're using? 100%. Um, if, if the MacBook Air had 100% iOS compatibility, I think we'd be having a different discussion right now. For the, for, but, the, but the reality is, is that even though they, ha they created this way of, of porting applications and running applications from iOS, to Mac, we really haven't seen huge uptake in that space. No, and the implementation of the apps I have used is not that great, right? There's a lot yeah. of work to be done there. And that's not the developer's fault. That's still on Apple trying to connect all the pieces together to make a seamless experience. Yeah, and I think that this really is not going to play out until we see major chip architecture changes in the Mac. Which for, may be coming later this year, right? May be coming later this year or, or in the future. <laughs> we don't we don't know what the future brings anymore, Jason. All I know is that I, I'm that I think we're gonna have a lot of, had a harder time getting our haircuts, you know, <laughs> professionally done in the next six months. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get better at this. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, the next six months are gonna be very interesting, um, and <laughs> on a lot of levels. Yeah. Um, so. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the iPad Pro once you receive it. It starts shipping, I think, on the 25th, so a week from today. Uh, I, I can't wait to hear what you think about it. I'm going to hold off until the Magic Keyboard is around, unless Apple is nice enough to send me a review device, which hopefully they do. They normally do. Um, for this episode, I think that's a good place to stop, unless yeah. you have any closing thoughts, Jason. No, I can't wait to get the thing. I got, I got all these games that I had that I, had, that I have on, on backup and... and I haven't touched in seven or eight months. You know, maybe maybe yeah. one of those idle I, those idle play games. I'm, I'm a gazillionaire at this point. You know? <laughs> yeah, you your farms are doing really well. And your farms are doing extreme, or or they're or they're completely burned down. You never <laughs> know, right? Yeah. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Jason Squared. I'm Jason Cipriani, and I am Jason Perlow. Make sure to check out more of our work at ZDNet.com.